Crap, I don't know what to do for an intro. Ah! What's up, guys? My name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online. Look at this. Look at this beautiful, beautiful. crap 400 it's series. It's not a flat car. Look at that. Yeah, it's a hopper. They're expensive. They're 850. I thought they they're were only 750. Super they are expensive. 850. Yeah. Yeah, so back to being broke, but we've made uh, the best little train ever. Yep. Yep, one hopper, one caboose, and one good old Betsy. Because yeah, you wanna you yeah. wanna drive there? Let's get sure. Uh, let's, let's go. We're gonna we're gonna deliver some iron today. Yeah, to the smelter. I think it, it. I don't know how much money it'll make. I think it's like four hundred bucks, isn't it? It feels like it's I a lot. I cannot remember how much iron sells for. So we'll find out. Yeah, Hopefully, we'll it'll find be out. worth it at least. At worst case, we yeah. can leave it at the iron mine and or not the iron mine. We can leave it at the smelter. And then next time we run by with the loaded train, we can take it back up and bring yeah, it down. Yeah, I think we leave it at the smelter no matter what. I mean, until we start transporting coal, we have no need to really bring the hoppers back here. Exactly. Um, once we start doing coal, then coal has to go all the way to the ironworks, which is like way to the south of the freight depot. Although I feel like, to be honest, since we're doing ridiculous stuff anyway, we should probably have a line that just goes over the mountain to the refinery. You know, ironworks area. I'm a fan of doing that line. I've run it a yeah. couple times. Once, which was ridiculous in a giant wooden trestle roller coaster thing. Right. Which, uh, yeah, well, we, we we were there for that many years ago. It yeah, and then like. we could have we could have um a help another helper station on the refinery side of things. You know, and like have multiple like because we have a helper station at the iron ore mine, which could carry you up to the coal mine. And then you go from the coal mine up to the refiner. I guess we need another helper at the coal mine. We'll just have helper stations everywhere. You know what? We're just going to buy the, all the engines. Yeah. All of the engines, yeah. But I feel like that route is like, it's just so much more direct. I mean, having to bring coal to the ironworks, but go all the way to the north side of the map and then all the way back south, that's insane. It feels like a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So why not just make it a lot of work and just go up and over, but make the linear distance very short? I support it. Well, to be honest, we could actually we could make a line at the coal mine that um yeah i guess we could make a gravity line i was thinking but then we're, we still have to bring the cars back up sometime i guess yeah they ultimately need to make it back up the other way for sure yeah so you, you uh what, have... what fun facts do you have about hoppers we're, fun we're facts the fun about fact. hoppers oh boy fun facts part of the episode fun Play facts the part of the episode about hoppers i mean hoppers it's interesting uh so remember i work for the colorado railroad museum and we primarily have artifacts from Colorado from many different railroads but the the one that we have the most of is the Denver and Rio Grande Western which is the modernized version of Denver and Rio Grande which there are a number of engines in the game no, with no hopper cars no hopper yeah they, cars they didn't do hopper cars <laughs> they didn't do any hopper okay they, so they had they had gondolas instead which were basically flat cars with a, a smaller hopper on them some of which were drop bottom which are really cool kind of like this hopper is but they they never had a true hopper car like this so the only thing I know about hoppers is that there were two ways to empty a hopper, as far as I know, which is one is a drop bottom, and that's where the bottom opens up with like little shoots like this does, little hatches, and then yep. you, you drive the car over like a, a mesh, and then it all falls underneath them, like through the, the mesh fencing, whatever, into the collection area. Um, like there's like the rails are open. And then the other way was they would disconnect the hopper car and tilt the whole car on like a big rolling barrel thing. Sometimes they wouldn't disconnect them, and funnily enough, what they would just roll it. But the what? couplers you said like a 360 coupler. The couplers like a... had special draft gear that could pivot like that, so the coupler itself would remain coupled to the next car, but the draft gear had a pivot point in it in both ends, so they could spin the car. And the th hilarious thing that I only recently learned about is that the Rio Grande narrow gauge had that. They dumped but they didn't gondola. Have they, they used gondola cars instead of hoppers. So longer, and they didn't have the, the tilted sides like this in the, in the middle for the dump in the middle, right? Uh, and they weren't as tall, so they didn't haul as much. But they had a transfer loading station in Salida, Colorado, where they took cars from the narrow gauge and transloaded them to the standard gauge. And they rolled them on this amusement park ride roller coaster looking stupid thing that took the car and not only did it spin it, but it also translated as it spun. So it basically put it in this frame and rolled it down the side of a hill a little bit to the standard gauge track where they would dump it in. I've got a picture of it that I'll, I'll have to include, but it's just one of those stupid things like, why do they do that? Well, they got tired of shoveling the cars out by hand because that's so they the would third dump way. one car into the next one. Yeah. 
because the narrow gauge didn't go all the way across the state or everywhere that they needed to deliver cargo. So they would transload right. from narrow gauge to standard gauge, and the easiest way to do it was just dump the car upside down. So they figured out a way to do that. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, it's one of those things that it doesn't make a lot of sense for narrow gauge when you first think about it, and then the more you think about it, you realize it makes even less sense because those cars were they had, so they had a height advantage. Like the one was like dumping off the side of a hill onto the like the other. Yeah, one the, the narrow gauge had to run up a hill to get to the dumping station. But That's the thing ridiculous. that doesn't make sense about it is that the bodies of those cars are all made out of wood because they would twist. They had some amount of metal reinforcement, but not much. So if the car goes upside down, you're relying on wood for all the bearing of now all the weight of the trucks and the wheel sets and everything. And the trucks and wheels, you pick the car up. I don't know if they picked the body out of the bolsters of the trucks, so they left the wheels behind and just dumped the body, or if they dumped the whole truck. But if they dumped the whole truck, the, the plane bearings, they're all filled with oil. So all the oil is going to dump out, like, <laughs> none of Wait, it makes you, any you sense. Said, you said, like, lift up the car without the truck. So are train trucks literally just keeping the car on the track with gravity? Like, the yeah, weight of the car is... Yeah, it's just gravity, with, yeah. With, with Even these... modern-day stuff, like a modern-day train truck, if you were strong enough, you could just lift a train car right off its wheels? Yeah, it's actually even easier on the modern-day stuff compared to the old stuff. Yeah, so... On, Why on... is that? It's like, that's like your car's suspension only staying because your wheel is like on the ground well your car's like, wheel doesn't went weigh over a several with tons. your car your your front wheel would fall off that's basically like that's what that's basically doing well so it's an ease of maintenance thing really so on the early day stuff like this that we have in the game we have plane bearings which means that there's a physical journal box and there's an actual bearing that has a bronze cap to it that actually provides the weight transfer between the axle that rolls and then the actual car body itself. And you have usually some cotton or a, or a pad underneath that's soaked in oil to keep the axle lubricated and everything. And so you can't really just drop the wheels out of the truck frame because you have to hold the box in place. And so they're bound in place basically, although they can go up and down with the suspension a little bit. That said, the trucks themselves, the a composite assembly that has the two wheel sets, the boxes, the suspension, that is just held in with gravity and a center pin to the car body, but the brake rigging hangs from the car body. So if you have the brakes set, it squeezes the trucks, and so technically, if you have brakes set, it shouldn't fall away or anything like that. But the ease of maintenance of modern day railroading comes from the fact that we now use roller bearings instead of those plane bearings. And the roller bearings are just sat in by gravity because the roller bearings are a contained unit. Part of it's on the axle pressed on. Part of it is the outer housing that can spin. And so that spinning housing is mounted to the truck. The axle can spin within. And then if you lose gravity or if you were to go over a ridiculous jump or something, not that that happens in the railroad, but the truck frame is free to just leave that bearing. It just rides on it with nothing underneath because there doesn't so need to be anything. How much vertical movement would you actually need? Like like an inch, two inches? Like there's got to be a little bit of a nest involved to, there, right? To like, totally lose the axle, you'd have to move, you know, the diameter of the bearing, basically, or at least the radius of the bearing to then clear the edge, so right? It's like three or, three or four inches or something. Uh, like on modern day cars, it's actually quite a bit. It's about six inches because those bearings are oh, pretty big because we're, we're talking about like 100 ton plus cars that are 85 foot long in the modern day, a lot bigger. So, uh, you know, it, it's definitely an interesting thing, but it's made maintenance easy because, okay, you got a wheel, get a flat spot. Okay, well, how do you change it? You just jack up the truck, roll the wheel out, put a new wheel in. No bolts, right. no nuts, no nothing. You just, right there, pick it up, boom, new one, done, sold. And, and and it's really efficient, and it's really helped modern day railroading be a lot faster, because previously, with cars like this, you'd have to undo the five, six, seven bolts to undo the binder straps, and then you'd have to take the boxes off, and you'd have to jack the boxes as you're jacking the truck to make sure they don't tip and scar the journal, and all this stuff, and you're worried about it, and oil leaks everywhere, and it's a mess, and yeah. Modern day railroading is actually pretty high speed in the way that maintenance is done. And uh, yeah, it seems a little strange that, oh my God, it's just gravity. But when you're talking about a hundred plus tons above you, it really only needs to be gravity with how slight the changes are on the railroad. 
Do I get room service back here at all, or am I just stuck, like, fending for myself? Like, I'm, you know, I'm just... You got a stove back there, cowboy. You don't get room service. Cook for yeah, yourself. Yeah, my stove is going, man. I'm, I'm cooking up some something fierce, you know? You ever seen the show Breaking Bad? That's what's happening in this caboose right now, okay? <laughs> okay. Walter. Walter, put out the fire in the stove. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they caught us crossing the border. Yeah, there's only one line. I mean, we had to, they just, they just sat here and waited until the train showed up. Like it was, you know, it was. Dude, so it was funny. A uh, bit of international drama between my country and your country, by the way. So I oh, okay. used to work for BNSF, which is the biggest railroad in the United States. And they have a couple lines that run into Canada. And one of how them- did, How does that work? The, 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 they still own the rail in Canada, but it's on Canadian soil, but they, they own it as their company. And exactly, like, exactly. And they have an and operating they agreement. Their trains on it. They have operating agreements with the territories to operate it there, but the rules for the labor and everything get all different because you're in Canada. So the machinists and people, it was always this huge problem because it would be like, we'd have one station up in New Westminster that would connect to Seattle, basically up through Canada, up in the Northwest. And, like, a locomotive would just routinely just break in New Westminster, and it would break so bad that they couldn't drag it back to Seattle or drag it across the border. And so we'd have to figure out visas and stuff and figure out how to send a machinist out of our shop who's capable of fixing it to Canada, and then they'd have to drive there and fix it in the shift or do overtime. It was always a disaster, but we used to get all these emails about, like, oh, yeah, there's a hobo that's trying to ride across the border into Canada, and we had to stop the train, and blah 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 because the detector picked up a, a thermal image of a of a body on the train you know so we had to stop the oh train and all this stuff the amount of detection and automation that happens there is insane all right hold up i'm gonna grab the helper okay yeah i think we're i think we're gonna need it so we did the math you we probably don't but like you might we, we might we might so we did the math the porter is good for like twenty thousand pounds on this grade by itself which is yeah, not a lot, but it's, you know, it's enough. And with the hopper's weight being like 13,000, we added the caboose for fun com and completeness. Yes. Uh, we might be over tonnage. So we're going to bring the helper just in case and have it out in front of Betsy so that if we choo -choo. need to... Oh my god, that throaty whistle. It, it, Dude, it's... It, comes, it comes flying out of the gate too, like... Speedy oh god, boy. I'm not gonna overshoot this, oh, am please, I? Oh. Please, please don't bin it, Con. Dude, it can fight its own break. You can just go full speed with, with the, brake the brake on. on. It's like, uh huh. It's, is, it's your, awesome. is your brake supposed to work? Like, this is crazy. It's uh, a little bit sketchy because you have to use the round table to actually switch on. Um, yeah, exactly. Switch on. It's not a lot of space over here, but whatever, it works. How am I meant to open Betsy's sand hatch? Do I just clip through the the boiler barrel? Is that? Okay? I have no idea. I, I did. You I clipped through the boiler barrel. I, I opened it. I figure while I'm waiting for you to get out front, I can try and get some sand in this thing, maybe. All right. Well, I'm out. Oh, oh, right. That's right. I have the brake on at 100% with the reverser and the reg, and it, I'm expecting it to hold it, and it doesn't. Dude, this thing's a monster. Please don't, please don't bonk me. Please don't bonk. Sir, out. I was just helping you. Look, I'll help. I'll help line you up a little bit better. Oh, maybe not. It's fine. Hold on. All right, I'm, I'm dropping sand in. It's fine. Okay. We good, might actually good. be full. I don't know. I don't know how to tell how much sand I can't is in tell there, with the so. sand, yeah. In real life, I guess you just look in the hatch and go, oh, there's sand. Yeah, like pretty much. You make sure it's over the, the traps that are in there. You can see the uh, the actual traps that feed it into the pipes. And then if you can't see those, you know you're having a problem. But yeah. All right, uh, take, take us ahead here. Uh, Con. I'm actually not even at full boiler pressure, but oh, it's uh, fine. Here, just, here just we go, go. Just go get out of the way, and we'll see how far Venerable Betsy can get this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put her at like eight percent reg. All right, I'll, let me get some break here. All right, here we go. Come on, Betsy, let's go. I mean, you should make it. You should make it a little bit. It is funny how much this looks like Betsy's bigger cousin. You know, like, like, right. Betsy's getting beat up at school, and then this guy shows up, and you're like, hey, okay, I'll stop on a stop Betsy. Stop messing you know? with Betsy. Kind of, kind of what it feels like. Look, you got the wood burning in the stove on the back, too. That's, like, extra horsepower. You right. Know? It, it helps. <laughs> All right, so the, the grade starts on the stone wall, yeah? Uh, like, the grade starts pretty much right here, yeah. 
Okay, I'm so I'm gonna be getting about five percent, I think. Oh, I'm oh. just like, I'm just cruising along. I jumped out to double check my brakes, and I physics glitched through the train, but I managed to jump out of it. It's fine. Get you're, back in my cab still, and stay in my cab. Betsy's got those small drivers, She's though, man. She's got those little I drivers, man. It might make a difference. You're still just... She's a torquey little monster. Yeah, I'm at 22% reg right now, just casually going up 6.5% like it's nothing. It's actually kind of funny how this train doesn't even feel it. Right. It's just like, oh, okay, we're moving, cool. Dude, you're still, you're on the full six and a half now. You're still, like, she's, gaining on me. I had to... slowing down a little bit. I had to crank it up to 30. That's unbelievable. Betsy might actually just... Oh, I've fallen off, so... Oh, I see that. Okay, I was well, trying to get uh... a good thumbnail shot, and the physics clipped me through. Okay, good, but perfect. Well, you you just climb back up. I'm, I'll, I'm, uh... I'm climbing. I might make it, actually, oh, onto I, the train. I see you. Okay, I see you. No! Yeah. Physics. Ah! I'm stuck. I see you. Okay. Well, good news is Betsy's still going. Um, Betsy's still going. Betsy's gonna go continue going without me apparently because she's just. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It do <laughs> doesn't fine, matter. It doesn't. It's actually gonna make it. She's just gonna make it with the caboose. Okay. It was gonna be close, but I thought it was gonna be closer than I this. I think the next climb is longer. This gets to zero percent for a bit here, obviously, and then I think the next climb up after this zero percent is a lot longer of a climb. I'm gonna run and try and clip the corner and see if I can head you off at the pass. Dude, I love the class 48. I really want like five of them now. You know, right. just have it's a huge... such a good switching locomotive. They're really cool. Oh my god, Betsy's just hauling butts now. I can't catch up. Yeah, the Betsy's, yeah. You gotta head us up at the next bridge here. I guess the, the next pass, which I, I don't even... I don't know if I can I get up over there. I can't believe you fell off the train. What did we learn? Well, okay, well we learned that being a train. client in Railroads Online is a painful experience between this episode and the last one, okay? Dude, Betsy's actually still catching. Okay. Insane. All right. All right. I'm uh, I'm stuck. Okay. I'm in the caboose. Oh, perfect. <laughs> the way car. I'm in the way car. I've made it. I'm like silent going up this hill. The one thing I will say about about um, the class 48. Obviously, it's got the bigger drivers, but the yep. piston size is huge. Yeah. Like so much bigger. It's got this massive piston, which is just generating so much force. Like there's. It's actually itty bitty compared to anything, but you know, railroads well, online trains are all guys, small. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can't believe you didn't even need me the whole time. Unbelievable. I am. I'm really shocked. I thought for sure we were gonna be underweight. I'm just full steaming it ahead to go set some. Switches. Oh my god! Oh my god! I made it back to the cab. I can't believe it. The physics all right, was fighting so me the whole way. We have to turn your whole train around. So we got a. We'll have to run around either twice, or we can Dutch drop one of the cars. Dutch drop the hopper, kick, and the coach. Oh, we, we, got, we could do, we can do a double double drop. Yeah, that'll work, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get close, and I'm going right, to physics fly the break slide through the thing. All right, I'm on the caboose, because right, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm All right, stuck. well, I got Betsy here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we, we, you might have come in a little we, hot. We're not. Uh, yeah, because I'm just stuck. Physics colliding between the platforms yeah, the, of the, the cars. Yeah, the caboose. The caboose physics is tough. Um, dunk. Dunk. That was a, just a little dunk. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So. All right. I'm now on the platform of the caboose. Uh, bring him back. Yeah, we'll, we gotta, we'll, we'll we drop gotta the caboose. We gotta... uh, we'll drop the caboose into the run around here. All right. Well, let's just let's just flick this switch in front of me, and then we'll go forward, and then run around, and then. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, you're, you're can, just gonna you're gonna saw past the class 48. Well, no, set the, yeah, I'll go past the class 48, but set that switch to the left when I pass and Dutch drop the caboose into the little. Lane, oh, I get you, know? you. I get you. All right. I'll go full rag here. You gotta. I guess you gotta get on the. Caboose I gotta get be on the caboose to cut it off. Yep. Oh, that's come good on enough. physics. All right, caboose is got off. Break. Put some brake on it. It's been braked. Keep going. Keep going. Click. 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 Got it. No. No, it's Cue me! Cue me, your it's switch that, codes. That would have been that would have been so perfect. It would have been so perfect. It, it's fine. It's because I was still on the switch trigger. That's fine, that's fine. That's I'm fine. gonna drop this here. Um 
And then you now you can run. You can run around it. You can run around it again. I'll just grab the class 48 and drag the caboose out because, like, while oh, okay. you're like, and we'll just throw it on the thing. Oh, that that works too. Yeah, yeah. Big big chunky boy sitting back here doesn't have anything to do, you know. Sure, might as Excuse well have uh, two chuchis doing things. See if Betsy can hold back one hopper by herself. It's full. Somehow I feel like that's a dicey feel proposition. Like you're gonna need some some breaking on the hopper potentially. Probably. Uh, five that. I love the fact that the class 48 has no leading wheels. I always keep thinking like, oh, I gotta watch out. I got these leading wheels, and then it's like, nope. Nope. She's don't. just a big 060. Hello, I'm going this way. Just don't mind me. Choo -choo. God, you're so fast, dude. The acceleration is so much like bigger than Betsy. It's hilarious. Yeah. All right, I got the caboose here. Wait, I'm an idiot. We don't need to do this. What do you mean? Oh, wait, you have the hopper behind you. I do. Yeah. Okay, we do need to move this then. I was gonna say, if you had the hopper in front of you, we don't have to move this. You can just hitch it up. But no, you don't. You have a hop behind you, so you still need to use the runaround again. So I gotta, I gotta move this out of the way. I mean, I could just be on the uphill end of the, hop the hopper too. But. Nah, don't, don't worry about it. We're doing some real switching operate. Okay, so how does this work in real life when you're running multiple switch like trains at the same time, just very carefully? Like it's just, that's just. Uh, in the time before radios, it was definitely a uh, make sure everyone knew what everyone was doing kind of thing. In the time with radios. You always check with the other crew, it. or you you talk by number, so you're always talking about number one, do this, or number two, do this, which is why. And I do asked. they have a yard controller guy that like you know looks over everything? Like yes, a, the, like the yard master. Control? Yes, the yard master. Okay, yeah. what does he what does he do? Yard master they, I'm is it's all like modern screens and stuff now. And now like these all... days, yes, yard master is like the hardest and most thankless and awful job to have on the railroad where you are in oh. charge of everything that happens in the yard as far as moving trains. So building consists, building cuts of cars, building, getting engineers and conductors the right places. Uh, it's, I mean, they always had, they were on fire anytime you called them needing something. It was always like, you better answer this question in two seconds. Uh, I've got stuff to do, you know, kind of thing. So, right. All right, I got the class 48 parked, ready to go back down the hill. Okay, um, I guess I'm gonna are... run around and, uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll do some switching for you. You got to run around um, and then basically just uh, drop the hopper. And we can actually Dutch drop the hopper right into the caboose, maybe. All right, I've cut it off. Okay, good. I got to flick this for you first. But the problem is we need a we need to get a huge gap. We need enough gap to like drop a whole switch, right? Well, I've, I've made that by running ahead very fast. <laughs> True. So it, it, it's rolling slow, but it's not rolling so sl painfully slow, at least. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it'll at least make it. It's close enough. All right, let me disconnect this. Oops, not that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's pinned. Perfect. Let me check the boost. Should I spin, spin Betsy bet around? Yeah. Yeah. Biggest waste of a turntable ever to spin a freaking 040 porter. <laughs> right. Can always grab it Goes with the Goes the reverse and forward, okay? You can always grab it with the 050. Where's there? Okay, is, I know the the pistons on Betsy are on an angle, right? And yep. some of them are some engines have them at an angle, some have them linear. I'm assuming the angle is to give you a, a stronger lead stroke because of the the way you know the angle according to the wheel and the leverage point. So it uh, actually doesn't really change that much of a difference because oh, okay. it has to still be relative to the center of the wheel, no matter what the angle of the piston. The, right. the uphill thing a little bit was some designer's way to just try and get an easier angle on the wrist pin sometimes, which is the, the pin that connects to the uh, the crosshead and ties into the cylinder well, saddle long, itself. Long story short, though, I guess the question is, does it matter for a train? Um, the Like, like are they... Are they What's the word I'm looking for? Are they unidirectional? Like, does it is it more effective to go forward versus backwards on a train, like, just on the piston setup, or is it really not a big deal, depending on... It really doesn't make a darn bit of difference. Um, it it depends. Sometimes there are unique situations where it might make a bit of difference. Like in the case of RGS-20, our engine at the museum that we talk about here and there on the channel, um, 20's Johnson bar is only set up with bias in one direction, 
So right. you have more teeth in forwards than you do in reverse. So you technically have more power and travel in forwards than you do in reverse. Um, does that really matter for a passenger engine that's a 10-wheeler? Not really, except when you're right. on the Cumbres and Toltec doing a photo charter and they tell you to back up with 14 cars of freight train behind you and you can't shove them back up the hill. <laughs> that's the only time I've ever seen it come into play. But, uh, you know, sometimes you have that. But otherwise, generally, I mean, it's really just forwards is the same as backwards. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Kind of cool how that works. It is neat. And the slight angle of pistons, you know, someone in the comments is probably more intelligent yeah, I understand. on that it's radi than me. It's radius to the radius to the center pin is really all that matters. But there's, um, I'm trying to think of it because if you think about it, if you're not perfectly tangential, it's going to change the point on the wheel at which your maximum force is delivered, if that makes sense. Yeah, it certainly could, because it does look like, with the way that these are set up, that it doesn't necessarily go precisely well, through so the Well, if you think center, about it from but... just an engineering perspective, if we look at it, right, like, the maximum force is going to be where the center of the wheel, drawing the line out from the center of the wheel to the connection point, is 90 degrees, right? Precisely. That's going to be the yeah. absolute maximum force. If your piston is straight in a line, then that maximum force is delivered, you know, somewhere Slightly above different. or below. Slightly different than if it were exactly flat, yes, but I don't think that right. gets you any actual benefit because, I mean, it's still, it just yeah, changes like on when this, that happens. The maximum force is delivered right at the point it's at, like, pretty much when it's kind of a little uh, left come, of the Come center. to the other side of the engine and you'll see it. I, I spotted it there for us. Oh, yeah, exactly, right? So that would be, like, kind of your point of maximum force, even maybe a little further back. So it's just, it's hard to say. Like, I don't know. i I, I got to look up the math for it now. I'm sure someone's done it and understands it. There may be a slight advantage to having the incline, but I'm, I'm really not sure what that gets you otherwise. It's something really only seen on really little engines and live steam engines, so. Which makes you think it's probably just something done for space rather than actual. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. All right, well, we've got the uh, mechanical parts. The loaded train here, so uh, get out the way there, Class 48. We're going to send Betsy down the hill with uh, all reckless abandon here. Oh, God, I'm predicting derail. You're going to, if you don't tie that hopper brake, you you know you're dead, right? Like, you know that that's, that's. You know, like, I should probably do, oh, yeah, I should probably do that now, he says. Because every time I've gotten out of the cabin, Betsy, it's just murdered me. Yeah, like, I think you're dead without that hopper brake. Hey, we didn't hit. It's fine. Dude, I, I take off so fast. You do. <laughs> okay, so I tied the brake, and, uh. Yeah, it stopped me. Uh, yeah, I couldn't move, so I gotta get on the hill first. So I gotta get scared. Look like, at how fast I can accelerate away. That's ridiculous. You are a little ridiculous. Yeah. All right. So I got a full brake on now, and I'm working against it. I love the flat drivers. Okay, so a flat driver. Wouldn't that give you blind, more friction? Blind driver. Blind driver. That's what's called. Yeah. Okay, so is it actually flat or is it like concave or is it? It is. It uh, it's flat in the middle, and then it has a dual taper setup. So it's tapered to the outside and tapered to the inside. And usually okay. they're actually a little bit wider than a standard wheel, so that you can get more contact patch as you're going around the sharper curves. And then the taper either side, if you do wander far enough to engage that taper, the taper helps wander the wheel back on and keep traction in really sharp curves. Interesting. Yeah. And they would, you would get more tractive effort out of a flat or a line driver than you would out of a regular one? Technically, you, you would not get more tractive effort, but you'd get better adhesion, yes. Because it's got a bigger contact patch. Bigger contact patch, precisely. And, and remember, tractive effort is only just the cylinder bore, the cylinder stroke, the wheel diameter, the boiler pressure, and a coefficient for the, uh, the efficiency, basically, of the Johnson bar. And that's all right. tractive effort is. So anything with the wheels, anything with the way the power is put down is an uh, adhesion question. So can you use the tractive effort? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. So it depends on the engine. Engines like these that are have all their weight on the drivers, they could probably use all the tractive effort they got almost all the time. The, the other interesting thing about blind drivers is that usually the inside to inside or backside a wheel to backside a wheel distance is also smaller than normal. So they make the wheel wider, but the outside of the wheel is still in the same spot. 
And so that way, when you're going around sharp curves, you've got that flat portion of the wheel guaranteed providing traction the whole way through. And uh, usually blind drivers were like, almost always for really big, long, rigid wheelbase engines. And then the right. only other application you saw them in was crazy narrow gauge applications like these. So the class 48 having one's not too surprising. They probably ran it around some ridiculous crap back in the day. Same thing with 20. And they would, and they would have like, wow, you're still you're still all in the mail. It's amazing. I've, I've, I'm working 100% against just the hopper's brake and just the hopper's brake with the weight of that car compared to me and the and the way car. I mean, it's yeah, really holding me you're back. Moving. If we had a, if we had a longer train coming down, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting adventure. I uh, I think that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, once we have more hoppers. All right, I'm going to get out of your way. I can't believe it. Didn't need the helper the whole time. That's awesome. That was uh, amazing. I'm glad we had that protection in place and ready for us, but the fact in that we didn't real life, need it. If you're, yeah. like, they would just calculate the load accurately enough, or would they do that? Would they send a preemptive helper ahead of a train and not actually... Or you'd just be like, screw it. If we're going to run the train, we're just going to connect it anyway. Well, so usually they, they do the tonnage math, and they have on the timetable how many tons the train was good for, you know? So if you had a, a Betsy they class pretty, or if you had a class 48, that, like they, were, they were pretty accurate and they put a, a safety figure on it because we were actually doing that math back with the uh, our GS20, again, at the museum again, to figure out just how tonnage our train was. I'll wait for you up here. Um, we were doing that math to make sure, okay, is it really tonnage for the engine or is it close? And, and it was... Did decently close, but we could have probably put another car on really before it got to true tonnage based on the curve and the grade, not just the grade, because curves also add to the uh, the tonnage rating, which Railroads Online doesn't simulate. But anyway, it's one of those things where you'd calculate it and you'd have the way bill and the manifest of the train, knowing how much the train weighed, and you would try it out. And if it didn't work and you were on a steep grade and they knew that helpers were going to be a thing, they could always send up a helper after you. And so a lot of times you'd have a helper on the rear that was called up to assist a train that was having some issues. Bye, Class 48. Goodbye. Good night. We'll see you again next time. Yeah, pretty much. Just enjoy your home. Or we'll get a Climax and throw it there instead for a Heisler. Right. That's going to be fun. All right, down to the smelter. The cool thing is now we're... Uh... The flat grounding into the smelt. There is a 1% climb up that bridge. Remember that bridge? <laughs> oh, deep? God. Will Betsy die so, on the 1% with a loaded if hopper? If can't make it up to 1%, we might have a problem. But no, it's 1%. I'm sure she can. pulls like yeah. 600,000 pounds on flat ground. Like, I think we're okay. I think we're fine. It's one car. This is a really cute train, though. I love the look. And and the yeah, height it's, almost it's, it's increases like the whole way back. Train, if you've ever, you know... You ever want to make a cartoon train? This is exactly what it this, is. This is it. Yeah. Love how disproportional the caboose looks. Right. Yeah. When the caboose is absolutely giant compared to Betsy. I mean, that that really shows you like the porter being the starting engine in this game. I mean, it's really an industrial engine. It's not really meant to be anything else. There were right. bigger porters that were used over the road, and uh, they were proposed as possible. Uh, some of them were 040s, many of them were 060s, like the Class 48. Some of them were tendered, some of them were tanked, but they weren't quite as big as the Class 48. And some of those were used over the road back in the day, but uh, not for terribly long. I will say, that is the one thing with roads and line. They basically start you with a porter and a flat car, and they go, have fun. Yeah, it's God, like, Godspeed. Okay. Here have, here have God, like, Godspeed. the saddest <laughs> railroading <laughs> equipment. Yeah. You don't really start with much. It would be nice if you started with like a Eureka or some kind of a road engine that's still terrible, but you know. But I get it. They want you to actually like buy the stuff. And I mean, realistically, if you were playing this smart, you would get your porter, you'd run a log camp line, a sawmill line, and you do those routes a few times, make a ton of money relatively quickly, and then, you know. Get after and then, it after that, yeah. Yeah. We kind of rushed the expansion, which is great because I jumped off the mountain. I'm on the bridge. <laughs> it's fine. Bye, Con. I jumped Bye. on a corner and ended up just getting yeeted. That's I'm a, climbing back up. It's a mistake. Yeah, I shouldn't have jumped on the corner. But yeah, it's like we, we obviously rushed to expand a little bit. And, you know, we kind of rushed to iron, which is good. Now we need to sort of make some money to do more iron trips, which will be good. And, you know, obviously we can get a lot more engines now. Um, but, you know, and, and rushing, I feel like rushing to iron is kind of like the best way to get money early. Obviously, oil, ironworks, refinery, that sort of thing, but they take so many products to make them work that right. it's just... 
Because now we can sell this iron because we have cordwood at the smelters. We can sell this iron when it produces. We're gonna start to make generating rails, and we're gonna start generating raw iron, and those can start making yeah. a hefty sum. So we may not make too many carloads worth, but they may be worth bringing back to the freight depot next time. Yeah, the question is going to be how much can the Porter and Montezuma pull up from the smelter? Oh 2%. god, the two percent. Because yeah, it's we we, all we way, though, we've so got it's... the class forty-eight for the the six point five, but we didn't think about the two percent. <laughs> we need another class forty-eight for the two. No, I mean realistically, we should get to the point where we have road trains where the two percent is not even a question. Like right. that's two like, percent that not be... bad. And honestly, I feel like if we only have like a couple cars, then probably the Montezuma could probably handle it with just a couple cars. I hope so. I really hope so. It's a you sad little choo choo. <laughs> yeah, she ain't she ain't the most powerful thing, but we gotta get some passenger cars in game for Montezuma so that she can uh, feel special. I gotta throw this switch. You can go straight. We do. Straight yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we're gonna have to back in. Straight in. Ah! Got oh, it. Nailed it. Yeah, 100%. yeah, you can just drive straight in. Uh, normally, we would have to disconnect the caboose, but I think we're the saddest little trains. So we we are... Go straight to the unload. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just going to run right in and, and dump it and call and it there. And then back right out and leave. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to do much else. Well, I guess we could leave the car here if we really wanted to, but... Just, just go back with the, the Betsy and uh, the Porter and the caboose. Leave the coal car, the iron car. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Let's run around it again and... Yeah, so we should so we drop can, the caboose on. on a different track then maybe. Uh, yeah, I can drop it, and then um, let me see. Here. I'll Where slow down a little bit, and uh, and then yeah. just drop it off, and it's flat into there, and I'll pull ahead. All right, I'm slowing. A little bit of break. Okay, we're good. Yeah, you got, pull I ahead. Gotta, I'm gonna, gonna go get my own over. switch. Oh, I'm not yeah, gonna be able to get I... my own switch. I got. This. No, you're good. There's all the same lanes. So you can just. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just not going to be on the unloading track. That's fine. Yeah, I'll just back through the unloading track then. Yeah. I dropped the caboose. Oh, you it's dropped over the caboose here. over there. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Which is actually good because the turnaround is perfect. I can just leave it there. The turnaround track is here because we're going to have to spin Betsy. We're spinning um, again. Yeah, man. I've got to spin Betsy. we got to play this. We, actually, we like no, to don't. face the correct direction on this road. Wait a minute. Actually, no, you don't. You don't have to spin no, Betsy. No, we, we screwed were this up. The caboose we needed to be on one of these lines. Oh no! I was gonna say I thought it was I, it was gonna make sense to drop over here. Right, but, you we're know, gonna, it's we're, fine. You're right. You're right. I screwed up. We're gonna drive back with the caboose uh, in the front of the train. Uh, it's, it's a normal. It's fine. That's standard operating procedure. Shoving through the caboose. Standard, standard practice uh, here. But, uh, do you have more money than me, sir? I think you do. Uh, I have. One hundred seventy dollars. How much money? Oh, do you have? I've got two hundred forty-seven dollars. Oh, is it my well, turn? Is it my turn to uh, to have the money again? Yeah, I got I got some. I'm level five now, so I can buy all the stuff. So go for it. Okay. How big, much money? Big that money make? now. Love these little drops. The, the drops iron. are still uh are still loading. All right. How much money did you make? Let's see. I've got four hundred forty-seven dollars, Con. You made like I, what? I made, I made like a little over two hundred dollars. I don't I don't okay. remember exactly how that math works out. But that cordwood is rapidly disappearing, which is sad and hilarious. That's good. That's good. We can start doing some cordwood runs, make more cordwood uh, money, and uh, more iron runs for sure. So you have 400 something, you said? 400? 447. So we got to do another run and then, uh, you know. It's if fun. we do another run of this and more cordwood, I feel like, like we could do cordwood down to here and then do another run up to the iron and back. You know, we might be good to go. I think that's the move. Are you just leaving? You're just leaving this here. I'm All leaving right, that cool. there. I don't see any reason to put it anywhere else. Yeah, that's a good point. We're not really gonna unload anything. If this is the only car we have to unload with. Right. Yeah. Perfect. We definitely need an engine shed here off the round table too. Future, future plans. For sure. Future episode. Easy, easy enough to put an engine shed up here. The, once the smelter starts really becoming more of a yard operation, I think. Which. Uh, yeah, it's just not not yet. Yeah, when we get it, its own class 48, or when the class 48 yeah. that we have becomes part of the, uh, the smelter op. Oh, I want to see people just come in onto the bypass line there uh, with their road train, unload all their cars, and then just leave, you know, and let whoever's running the smelter deal with the smelter. And when the smelter guy's like, like if you're coming to pick up an iron train or whatever, then the, uh, keep going forward. If you're trying to pick up an iron train or whatever, the smelter guy, you don't have a break, so you gotta, you gotta push. Thank you. Okay, now you're good. 
But yeah, we can have the smelter guy. It's like, hey man, I want to come pick up a train of iron beams or whatever. He assembles the train in the smelter, parks it on the thing. You come in, pick it up, and leave. There you go. You know, real, real operational stuff. All right, so uh, drop yourself past the switch here, and then I'll, I'll run around. Wait, what? Drop yourself past the switch. Don't you just go forward oh, now? I mean, we could also just shove through the caboose the whole way. But... Oh, yeah, no, we're shoving through the caboose the whole oh, okay, way. Okay, why know. not? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. This is how, this is the Polar Express experience, okay? We do everything. <laughs> Next, we're going to freeze the lakes and drift a train across it, okay? Just wait. That's not how that works. It's not how just any wait. of that works. Just wait, you just need- the problem is you're not thinking outside the box, okay? Instead of one Johnson bar, you just have two. One tank for each drive. side. Tank drive steam right? engine, yeah, exactly. exactly. Tank drive steam engine. Why did they not make that? Differentials like, on each axle. Yeah, it yeah. makes too much sense. Yeah, no, exactly. Two sets of valves, two valve gear, you know? All that stuff. It would just- it would just do the thing. It would be perfect. Can you imagine? You don't need a turntable. You just put your te uh, your uh, train in tank mode, and, and then, then just spin it around. Yeah, precisely. Around the spot. Yeah. <laughs> and then while you're at it, get rid of the, the steel wheels and make them out of rubber. And instead of tracks, just pave a spot. Wait a minute. You know, you know you're getting a little crazy there. I, I like the tracks. It's really inefficient. Let's put gas engines in them instead. Uh, make no, them a lot smaller. You're losing me there, Con. I don't. Uh, and then, you know. I like and then, steel like, wheels. So that if you smash them once, they're, like, completely screwed. And, no, uh, let's steel, to everybody. Steel wheels, steel rail, always, all the time. I don't... You're talking about some very strange concept. Um, Can you imagine the guy who, who um, you know, drives his car with steel wheels on asphalt? That, that guy, that guy is the true Chad of all the group. <laughs> there is that person who put, like, chariot wheels on, like, a Challenger Hellcat or something that I've seen. Oh, my God, that's, why? That's, it's the most cursed thing I've seen this week. So, all right. So, caboose. We've got our caboose. We're pushing through the caboose. It looks wonderful. It's got two little suspension pieces. It looks like the entire axle just bobs up and down in that slot on a suspension, like a leaf. It spring, does. You know? Yeah, it's a, a coil spring later, but it was probably a leaf in this era. Yeah. What's the coil spring in the middle then of the caboose? What's that doing? Oh, that's a. You know, I think that's. I'm not as smart on bobbers as I should be. If I had to guess, it's probably for transmitting load from one side to the other. So if one axle goes over a dip in the track, it transmits that to the other one. Oh, I see. Like a, like it's just a really long truck, if I had to guess. But I am far from an expert on bobber equipment. So yeah, I'll have to go like stare, at, uh, the, stare at a couple of the cars at the museum. Of the leaf on either end of the caboose, so it's like it's... Yeah, so it's it's, it's actually like steam locomotive spring rigging. It's fun. It's interesting. Yeah, it's like on either side, and it's got. <laughs> I feel like this is going a lot smoother than this would in real life. I yeah, like the, the uh, bobber the cabooses are. Imagine riding on an ancient lumber wagon with metal wheels on a cobblestone road but one of the wheels is broken. Right. That's kind of what a bobber caboose rides like. These are, these are teeth chattering to ride in, basically. Not you're... quite teeth chattering, but close. <laughs> we uh, like, we haven't run the 1009. If you were to try to a nice cup of coffee in a bobber caboose while going down the rail, would you, would you actually end up drinking any of the coffee? You would not you... want to fill it all the way to the top, or even pull it. You would fill it maybe halfway. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, they're they're not that bad, but they're not that good. And they just they travel a lot, right? Like they they search for the rail all they the time. Hunt, like, they hunt a lot, yeah. Yeah. Because you only have two two axles, and that's that's it. You know, it's not like you have a two sets of trucks that can then each individually hunt with their wheel sets, but then they kind of limit that hunting with the lateral and the axles and the spring bolster and everything and then you have two of them to then communicate that to a body. No, you're basically riding on the truck itself as a, as a bobber, so it, uh, they, get all, they get all over the place a little bit. And Betsy is just the locomotive version of that, and good God, you should see what an 040 does to the track and to the cars behind it. It's hilarious. A lot, they just do the... To quote the, uh, the man whose 040 I got to ride behind, Stoffy. Oh yeah, it does the 040 dance. 
you watch the coupler at the back as it's pulling a train of decent weight and it's just up down side to side insane all over the place because it's just it's doing everything there's nothing there's no other truck to hold it relative to the rail it's just the two axles and so it's scooting left and right and up and down and up you know up and left and up and right and all this well, stuff especially like as it's searching as it as it's putting down power it's going to be searching for like the path of least resistance so the wheels are like not every surface is going to be perfectly symmetrical so the wheels are going to find like the parts that have grip and the parts that don't yeah like, yeah yep. that's, and the gauge just... slightly changes and i mean they i mean they yeah. look like a cartoon almost with how much they're dancing around as they go down the track when they're working hard it's it's kind of amazing to see the bigger engines do it to a lesser extent, I mean, even even the huge engines, you can see them hunt and tip and do all these things because the nature of the steam engine is unbalanced just by the principle of you only have two cylinders to work with, really, on most engines. So they all do it a little bit, but the 040 is just the biggest amount of movement up and down versus side to side, front to back. Uh, and so they do quite the fun dance down the railroad. They're amazing to watch. Betsy was a little loud, so I tried closing the door. It didn't make a difference. Yeah, it doesn't help much. It nope. doesn't help much with the real thing either. <laughs> Maybe a little. We need bit. a yeah. We need a we need a well, one of the barber cabooses with the um, the cupola because uh, yeah, cupola uh, kind of cool. sucks. Yeah, just standing on this deck here. We'll have, have to get the to the that. DNRGW barber caboose so you can sit up in style and have your handbrake right there. A little bit yeah. classier than the stuff the DSP and P had. Just gotta say. Exactly. This is nice. It's a nice, nice trip. Well, it's gonna be about that time, Heist. I think gonna, so. We're almost to the freight the depot. Old... We're we're shoving shoving the caboose in. We're you know, yeah. let's go stab it at the yard. It's not that exciting. So, I yeah. think that's that, man. Yeah, it was a good, good trip. We need more money. We are we, so incredibly we, broke. You know, we said it a couple time. episodes ago that we were broke, and then uh, we made a lot of money, and it took a while, and then we again. bought an engine, and then we're broke again. And now we need another yeah. engine, and we need more cars. Well, I feel like we could start running, we could start running, like, cordwood down, ired up. Yeah, right? so we need, we, need more, we need more iron cars. That's the real answer. And, and we, it'd be nice to have a new iron road hoppers, engine, but, yeah. yeah, we need more iron hoppers first. Yeah, like we have the helper engine, which I feel like can pull easily four hoppers up, probably, maybe. I don't know. I think that would be enough at least to start, and then we could look at maybe another engine. We definitely need another road engine because our road engines suck. Uh, we love you, Montezuma, but you're also yeah, it's small. it's it's kind of Montezuma's getting that. What didn't you say it only lasted like seven years or something? Pretty much on the actual railroad by by 1880, it was like yeah, okay, and we're I think we're, we're on done. year seven, so we're pretty we're much just, we're getting to that point. It's time um, time for some bigger motive power, but yeah. But you yeah, know, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you check out Heist's channel. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, I don't know which lane you're going into, but whatever one, it's probably good enough. It's probably fine. We'll just I can't yeah. see any of the cars in the yard, so I assume oh, it's fine. We're just going to go full speed to the back of this. Oh, thing. hey, look. There's cordwood cars there. Uh, break. Yeah, break. Just breaking. Loop. Breaking. Or steak cars. Anyways, breaking. Breaking. There we are. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, and uh, you know, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.